Hi, it's Kerner Text here again with um, an extra video to show how a package which is not in the BLFS book can be installed just by, um, well, A, identifying the package you want and B, reading the instructions and hints on how to install the package and basically how you can quite easily incorporate packages that aren't in the manual um, into your BLFS system. So I've, if you've just come from the um, end of part eight of uh, installing BLFS from scratch, then I've basically just kept the desktop up as it was. I've, I've just stopped the previous video and started the new one just to create this little extra bit for this game, which is called Wesnos. It's a kind of strategy game. It's a very polished game to look at and. Um, it's a good way of uh, spending some time relaxing to play this game. It's quite a nice game. Uh, so let's start by getting a browser up. I'm going to use Firefox this time. So um, let's get that going. So let's go to I uh, won't go straight there actually, I'll just type Wesnoth in. Go straight to the website. So this is the game, it's called Battle for Wesnoth. And what I'll do is get a terminal up. So that'll be under system I imagine. Right, okay. I'll don't know where it is, so I'll just type it. I'm going to use the KDE console and let's increase the size. Large font is control plus on this one, so yeah, using the right button it works. The correct button, so let's make this 80 characters at least. So I'm going to go to sources, BLFS. And what we've got to do is download it now. The download button here, generally you click on that and it will download something for Windows or it will download a binary, but it actually says the source is here available for download. And if you look at the URL at the bottom of the browser, it actually does say .tar.bz2, so you can see it's a compressed tarball, which indicates it is for Linux. So maybe the scripts on the web page have identified that we're running Linux and it's offered the correct uh, package. So I'm going to do as usual, copy that link and use wget to download it. Okay, and it's actually downloading to something called download, so it may have been easy just to click that, left click that in the browser and yeah, down it through, download it through SourceForge. Uh, So I'm going to go back on that so I don't get two of them downloading. And what I'll have to do is rename this afterwards to that name there. So you can see it's quite a big download, it's 430 meg. And then what we'll do was unpack it and look for some readme files or some sort of instruction, some text files which give us a, an indication of what we need to do to uh, compile it and install it and with any luck after we've passed, uh, followed those instructions we'll have a working game we can use.
So that's downloaded. Let me get it extracting. Oh, let me rename it first of all. So MV download. I'm going to rename it to that file there, file name there. And then we can extract it. So while I was extracting, you'll see this information about the game here. Um, and also it's got the minimum recommended and the only Linux related thing there apart from Apple Mac OS is Ubuntu. Well, that's not strictly too true with a lot of these uh, packages or programs you can pull off the internet. They probably say something like that so that um, to give some sort of idea that it, it will be compatible with the larger um, distributions but um, I'm sure you could get this going on virtually any Linux platform or Linux flavor. Right, so that's extracted. Let's go into the directory. See what we've got here. So not too many in this one. This, that's okay. So there's a readme.md there, which is normally a good place to start. There's a copyright file and a copying file. So let's let's have a use fire to read this. So here we go. It says Battle of Wesnoff is an open source turn based tactical strategy game. A a description, there's a license which suggests you read in case you don't agree with it. And it says for installing, see installer MD for instructions on how to build the game from source code. So that looks like that's what we need to do next. So let's come out of that. I can't, oh, there's an install MD there. So we look at that one. So prerequisites, what I'll do is I'll close this down here, I'll move this window over here, bring up a new window and what we'll do is we'll read the instructions in the left and um, perform the instructions on the right, which is a bit, bit like what we've been doing so far with um, when we're building the Linux from scratch packages, so I've made this font a little bit bigger. In fact, I'm doing this on the keypad button, so in KDE or at least with console, the uh, keypad plus and minus, the control plus and control minus does actually utilize, uh, uh, sorry, modify the font size, which is probably why I got caught out before, because as I say, I'm used to KDE and used to cons using console. Okay, so uh, prerequisites. It needs a compiler with sufficient C++11 support, such as GCC 4.8 and later, or CLang 3.3. So I know for a fact we've got GCC 8.2. CLang, I'm not sure what version, but we're okay with GCC. And then it says we need these libraries. So I mean, we could check for these things in the BLFS directory. So uh, let's actually look at GCC first of all. So that is 8.2, so that's fine. And if it doesn't use that, we need CLang 3.3 .3 or later. Now, I think that might be part of that LLVM, was it? I think I can't remember now, but I'm sure we've got CLang. Um, and if we haven't, GCC will be used because it does say 
GCC or CLang. Uh, let's also do a find. Lang in the name. Uh, no, I couldn't find anything. Maybe it was a capital C, I'm not sure. No. Not to worry, this this will build. So then we need boost libraries. So let's see what version of boost we've got. 1.69, so that's okay. It needs 1.50 or, or better. SDL2. So let's see if we've got that at all. Yeah, we've got STL2 version 209. And it needs 204 or better. And it says it needs STL2 image, mixer and TTF. So they may be things that we need to install because we've only got STL2 with the looks of it. Um... So font config is the next thing. Is that in lowercase? Yep, font config 2.13.1 and 2.4.1 is the requirement, so we're okay on that front. I mean, all these versions should be perfectly okay because they are more or less the latest versions. Not, not directly the latest, but they're pretty well up to date, so I'll be very surprised if none of these... Um, versions that we've installed are, are adequate enough. So Cairo again, 1.16.0 requirement is 1.10.0 so that's okay. And Pango, 1.42.4 1.22.0 with the Cairo backend which has been built. Vorbis file, we've installed Vorbis so that should be okay somewhere Is it capital V uh, this is confusing me because I thought we had that oh it's called libvorbis that's why So what I should have done is star v, yep, lib vorbis, lib bz2 we've definitely got because we've been extracting tarballs which have been bzipped, lib z again we've been um, doing stuff that requires that, it's quite a fundamental um, package, in fact I think that's actually part of um, Linux from scratch, the base Maybe not. Uh, let's have a look at the root. Yeah, Zlib. That's that's part of that library. And lib crypto from S OpenSSL. So we've got OpenSSL installed because I was using SSH to come in from my host machine into into this virtual machine. So I think the only three packages. Let me just scroll down a bit. Make sure there's no more. Yeah, the only three we're going to need to install are these three. It says there are optional uh, optional dependencies. So Dbus, we've got that. We've got desktop notifications. That's part of Linux from scratch, as I remember. Forbiddy we've got, although I don't need it because I don't use a language that uh, reads from right to left. But if you do, you will you will need that. Although, having said that, we have installed it already, so that, that should be no problem. So, let's confirm that we haven't got STL um, image mixer or TTF. So, let's do find again. Image. No, it's not finding that. Oh, what's that character there? Do that again. Okay, so it's found stuff in West North. That's the CMake file for SDL2 image. So 
it definitely looks like we haven't got that so we need to get the browser back up again fetch these three packages find out how to install them and then come back to where's not so let's oh what did I do that for Uh, one thing you can do here is you can right click and add to favorites and what it will do will add that application to the front the first part of the menu that comes up so you can quickly access all your favorite applications makes things a lot easier all right then let's use this as the default now so let's get another tab up and we'll search for SDL image and I guess preferably, assuming it, has, it shares the same versions, we should really use the same version as STL2, so that's 209. So it looks like we've got STL image here. Looks like 204 is the latest version. So let's copy that link and fetch that one. It looks like that's downloading slowly. The next one we want is STL Mixer. It could very well be off this web page. Um, this is libstl.org, so let's try taking that part off the web. Yeah, look, there it is, STL Mixer. So that latest version is 204 so let's copy that link wow this is slow um, right I'll chance downloading this in another tab but probably just oh no it's quicker maybe I've got a, a slow link on the other tab yeah that's really quick uh, let's stop that and see if we can get it again. Yeah, I just must have got a bad link at that time. So the broken file is still there, so this new one is downloaded. It's been renamed, so if we remove the partial file that we've got and then rename the file that we've just downloaded to the true name that should be okay and then the last one we need is sdl2 underscore ttf so let's go back sdl2 underscore ttf so there it is there 2015 so let's grab that one okay that's coming down slow as well let's try that again so I'll remove that one before I download it again or attempt to download it. Hopefully it'll come down faster. Yeah, it's a bit faster. Okay. So let's go through each one of these and install them. So we need to extract first of all STL2 underscore image. So this is really going to be the first package we're installing without the help of BLFS. So we are on our own here. So there looks like we've got a readme.txt, it's always a good place to start. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like there's an, inst oh, there's an install script. So let's look at readme.txt first of all. So it says, what does it say? It tells us all about it. Next version of the library is available. So it doesn't say actually how to build it, so let's come out of that. Let's see if there's any other files, changes, copying, image, install. So there might be something in this shell file might be some comments at the top of that so let's have a look at that uh, script file sorry 
install program to uh, No, that doesn't help us at all. So next thing I normally do, is there a make file? Yes, there is. There's a configure file as well. So I think... The fact that there's no other um, files that look like they might tell us how to use this. I think configure, running configure with help would be a good start and this looks like a fairly standard configure so yeah there's all the usual switches and uh, switches that allow you to alter where uh, files will be put uh, install and then we've got the optional switches here so I'm not going to play around too much with this um, so it looks like a lot of it is to enable stuff and it's all defaulting to yes so I think uh, best thing to do is to do the configure and use the prefix option which is used for just about every package that we've installed if not all and if you look at here prefix install the architecture dependent independent files in prefix so the default is user local we've not been using that we've been using forward slash usr so i think that would be a good good place to start using that command so that looks like it's configured correctly there's no complaints that it couldn't find something it it relied upon you can see it's found stuff that we've already got installed jpeg lib uh, tiff lib as well um, even web webp as well and you can see the status there, even png so that's good so we all we need to do now is type make And that seems to be built successfully, so all that's left to do is install it. Oh, what did I type there? That's it, it's been installed. So that looked quite successful. Let's remove that now. Is it underscore image? Okay, and we move on to the next one, SDL2 Mixer. I imagine this is going to be pretty much the same. Um, especially as they've come from the same um, organisation. So let's see what's in here. We've got a readme again. Um, we've got a configure again. It doesn't appear to be any installed file again so let's have a quick look let's do just do less this time readme.txt um, okay it's given us a bit of information tremor decoding is disabled by default you can enable it by passing that switch there so we could try that libmad is de decoding is disabled by default you can enable it by passing that so we could try that because we've got libmad as well there's a warning about the license for libmad it's GPL um, saying that the application must also be GPL so maybe we won't enable that um, else we'll have to look at the license carefully of Wesnos to see if it, they're compatible so let's just enable that one but apart from that, I think we'll go for configure minus prefix equals forward slash USR. Add that switch in as well and see if that works. Yeah. Um, so confined opus, I thought we had that installed. Maybe not.
So there's a couple other things that we're looking for. Oh, I didn't actually find the Tremor library, so that's obviously something separate from Og then, the Og Vorbis. So just for safety's sake, I'm going to remove that and rerun in case it does try to build it. Yeah, it's the, the message about that is gone now, so that's probably better. So let's build it. And we can do sudo minus e make install. And again, that's quick install. Let's remove the directory. So the last one I've got to do is stl2 tiff. stl2 underscore, sorry, not tiff, ttf. So let's look at this one. We've got a configure command again. A readme.txt, so we'll do the same as before. They do look pretty much the same. Oops. So this is a wrap around the free type 2 library. I don't say anything about installing, so we'll just quit that. We'll do the same configure prefix command. Again, you could check configure to see if there's any additional switches you may want to install, but I think for this um, situation, just straight configure is enough. And we'll do a make install as well. And that's that one done. Okay, so we should have all the dependencies satisfied now. Let's see what it says about building it. So before building, make sure to untie the package and change into the newly created directory. So we've still got Wesnoth. Let's change back into it. It tells you how to extract it and how to change into the directory. Um, and it says now that we also need scones, which we have got. There's scones 304, it needs quite an old version of the looks of it, 0 0.98. Um, and this is saying we actually need CMake, so what I think I might do is just quickly look at the um, BLFS book and do a search on there to find out what CMake we've got, It'd be quicker, rather than trying to fathom out the um, actual file name. So we've got 3.13.4, so again that's adequate and to be doubly sure, let's see what the program is called, it's called CMake. Let's type CMake and usually it's something like minus minus version to get the version number. Yeah, there it is and it proves it's, it's actually installed and running. So that's good. We'll also need to have a working installation of GNU get text which we have because that's installed as part of Linux from scratch and then it says while Wesnoth may easily be may be easily installed system wide using scones or CMake it is also possible to run it directly from the source directory after building this may be useful in situations where you don't have root access or need to rebuild Wesnoth frequently so we're okay we've got root access so we can build uh, this system wide basically install it into the system for anybody to use. So the next part, unlike CMake or Classic, Auto Tools, Build System, Configure and Make, configuration and building are done in the same step with scones. Simply type scones in the top level directory to build the game client and MP server. So it's as simple as that. Um, oh, just reading on here, it says, it is possible to select individual targets to build by naming them in the command line by separate spaces. So to build a game client only, scones was not, and to build the, I presume that's multiplayer server only, you can do that. So I think it would be a good idea to do this. And it also takes a prefix argument as well. So 
let's do that first and then where's north so what we're doing is we're telling it we want to build it into the user prefix although you may want to consider the opt prefix if you decide to play this game regularly and you want to keep it updated regularly but for this situation we'll just use the user and then as it says there we're just going to build a game client and ignore the server So it says they're building West North version 1.14.7. So we'll just wait for this to build. And it looks like while that's building, just been reading this bit here, um, scones is one way to build it and CMake is the other way to build it. So you may want to try building it this way if you like. Until the install. And there's even more options there as well for presumably tweaking how how the build's done. So I think I'll just stick with the scones. We already had it installed. It seems to be the easier way to build it.
I've just realised that Scones is probably only running on one core because it's not using the make. Um, yeah, it is. It's not using the make uh, environment variable because it's not make basically. So what I'm going to do is press Control C, recall Scones, and put in minus J4. It's the same option as make. So hopefully that will speed this up a bit. Yep, it's carried on where it was. And let's just check that it's, yep, it's, that's better.
Okay, so that is uh, built. So all we need to do now is do scones install. That's the root, of course. And that should be it. Let's see if we can find it in the menu anywhere. Yeah, there it is. I imagine it's been put in a yeah games directory there. And it's even got its own icon, which is nice. So there you go. There's the uh, main menu. You've got a set of options down here. There's tutorial campaigns. Play multiplayer, load a game, etc. Um, the add-ons is quite good. There's loads of um, if you just take, take default server. There's a load of scenarios and uh, campaigns that you can download if you get bored of the default one. So that's quite good as well. Let's see that. Uh, there's a preferences button as well to change various things about the game but um, yeah it's quite an entertaining game if you go through the tutorial it's quite quite worth it it'll um, explain how the game works and how to play it so anyway the main point of that was not to play the game it was to show you how um, it's relatively straightforward to um, install a package that's not in the BLFS book just by looking for and reading any um, valuable documentation in the tarball that you download and um, some documentation is better than others as you might imagine is the case um, but yeah that just shows you know, how it is possible um, to do it from basically just having an idea or finding an application you think mm, I like that I want to install it it's not in the BLFS book I'll get I'll get the package. I'll read up how to install it and um, and go ahead and do it. So that that is the last video I'm doing for um, the BLFS um, installation. Thank you very much once again for watching. I hope you found um, the videos informative and useful. And I'll see you on the next uh, video I'll be doing. I'm not sure what I'm doing yet, but I've got some ideas. There will be some more coming. Thank you very much and goodbye.